Well, good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, whatever your current live situation is. Hello, YouTube. This is Jeffrey Kite back again with another episode of Kite's Curiosities. Went to one of my favorite stores today, Ollie's. Um, love Ollie's. Got an Ollie's up the road from where I live in a little old town uh, here in Georgia. And, uh, and Ollie's slogan is good stuff cheap. And man, they do they have some good stuff there. And you can find all kind of stuff. Just whatever you're looking for at some fairly discounted prices. So if you've got Ollie's near you, you need to go check it out. Especially if you are a comic book collector such as I. Yes, I know I'm kind of getting, I'm new into the comic book thing, but I'm learning a little bit more and more every day about uh, comic book collecting and where you find good stuff, good stuff cheap like today. <laughs> at Ollie's, and um, I've watched a couple YouTube videos about people buying uh, comic books at Ollie's, and they found some pretty good stuff, and I thought, eh, let me, I will see if I can go try and try it out, and boy, let me tell you, did I ever find some really good stuff today, and I'll, I'll go ahead and show you, and get on with the business of what we're doing, so. Anyway, if you go to Ollie's and you want to look for the comic book section, they're in where the books are. The books are usually in the front of the store to the left or right or wherever. They're, they're, they're book section. And just kind of just browse around, look around, and usually somewhere in that book section is a shelf with little poly bags like this. And we'll just say comic books. And usually you get five comic books for whatever they got them priced at. This bag here was $4.99. That's $4.99. I did pay um, $5.99. I don't really know why, but you know, some bags are $5.99. And they're five packs. And then they have packs of, I think, 10 comics for $7.99 or $8.99. Usually those are more modern comics that I'm just really not into, but I'll, I'll pick them up and just kind of look through them and, and see what's in there. But these little bags, I mean, I tell you what's the truth. I love these things right here. I, and the day, today was my first day of going. And the trick is, y'all might think this is unethical but I do it I mean I, I mean it's it's there for us to do and nobody in the store has a problem with it so I don't think anybody should ever have a problem with this the bags are real loose okay bags are loose they're sealed up all right look that one's sealed up sealed up at the top okay so what but what you can do they're kind of loose in here what you can kind of, you can take your finger, and if you've watched some of these videos before, you know, you just fast forward through this part until I get to where I open them, but you can stick your fingers in there and kind of move the books around and see, kind of get a little glimpse of what might be in this bag. It's kind of, you kind of have to work at it a little bit. Sometimes they're turned around, upside down, flipped up, and that kind of thing. You can kind of pinch the pinch the, the book right there, kind of like this, and kind of slide it up to the front to see up at the top what, you know, kind of get a little bit more glimpse of, of what, uh, what might be found in this bag. And, um, you know, some people have an issue with pack searching with cards. I don't. I mean, if you know how to do it, and do it. I mean, if you got an advantage, do it. So anyway, I did pack search all of these. And man, I found some good key comics. Um, a lot of you guys have been finding key comics in these bags of Ollie's. And I, I was hoping I could find some. And I sure did, man. I hit had a, what I would consider a jackpot in some... <laughs> 
some of these. So anyway, five minutes into the video without further delay, let's get on with it. You can see it's not been opened or anything like that. So y'all can't say, oh, well, he, he planted that comic book in there and, you know, he made out like he, he got this really cool, awesome key for at Ollie's. Y'all seen it. It's open. It is here. Okay. The bag is sealed. Cut it open. All right. There it is. All right. This right here. And a lot of these I'm not really into. I'm going to take these to school and let the kids read them. Take them home with them. But got that. Star Trek, what is this? Star Trek Starfleet Academy number 14 from January, or is it January? Yeah, January of 1998. That's all right. Got this one here. This was on one that you could see. This was Transformers. Micromasters, Transformers Micromasters number four from uh, October of 2004, I think. Can I open it up and see? A year in it. Yeah, October 2004. Again, a little modern for me. Eh, not a big fan of it. This was pretty cool, but again, it's a modern comic. It didn't really appeal to me. Um, Uncanny Avengers number 19. It was pretty, pretty cool looking cover right there. Kind of scary looking. There. And... Uh, Mighty Morphin Power Rangers number five from Boom Studios. The year was 2016 on this one. But the big hit in this, big hit in this bag was this bad boy right here. Brave and the Bold number 182. Bat, starring Batman and Robin. This is a nice little key right here. Um, it is the is from January of 1982, and it is the the first appearance of the Golden Age character Batwoman in a modern age comic. Very very nice uh, comic to have, and it is in really nice shape. Um, uh, CGC and not this and the CGC will go in a 9.6 recently sold for 50 bucks and an 8.0, a CGC 8.0 in, um, in this grade, 8.0 grade sold for $29. So this, I was very happy to get this, this is in great shape. Um, take a look at it. I don't know what it would ever grade out as, but uh, you can see a little, little Batwoman right there on the cover. And uh, very happy to have this. This could be this could be a, a high dollar comic for me in my collection if I ever decide to get it graded out. I'm gonna read it first though. All right, so that was my first bag. Bag number two, again, sealed up, sealed up, hadn't been opened, tampered with, what I pull out of here is legit, let's see, in these uh, comic bags, they come from this place called the at Ollie's, I guess their vendor, they got a contract with them. Supreme Marketing out of Fall River, Massachusetts. I don't know if you can see it. There it is. Supreme Marketing. 
Fall River, Massachusetts. I might look them up and see what they, if they got a website, see what they got going on. All right, so first off, uh, Teen Titans. Teen Titans number 14. A little, a little too, a little too modern for me, but I like it. I think it's from the 90s. 98, something like that. Mm. Mm. 2018. 2018, sorry. 2018. Mm, nice comic. That's kind of flash bone up on <laughs> bone up on Robin there. Got, got X Factor 45. I like this. This was this is kind of cool. It had um that's I believe that's Iceman on the front there. He was he was one of my favorite characters um on the cartoon show uh, Spider Man and His Amazing Friends. That was back in the like 1982. I always thought Iceman was kind of cool. So. And nice X Factor number forty five. Uh, what is this? This is um, Secret Avengers number three. I don't know much about that. I was just kind of again read it, and pass it on to the kids at school. And then the last two books were, you know, not major keys, but they're, they're keys nonetheless. Um, this one, what is the uh, West Coast Avengers number 72? And this is the first appearance of this, this Japanese fighter guy here named Irizumi. Or Irizumi, I R E Z U M I. So um, his power, or let me turn. It, yeah, well, you can see it. His his thing is he can absorb an attack from someone and turn it back on whoever sent it to him. So he he can kind of reverse reverse attack people. So uh, there we go. Couldn't find any information on this one um about being in the cgc grades or anything like that uh, but it is a key not a big key but it is a key nonetheless with this first appearance of irizumi i like that kind of a tough looking cover <laughs> yeah. then there was this one it just intrigued me when I was flipping through. I was like, what in the world is this? And I'm like, it's a number one and I got to have it. But it's a single, it's a single shot. Number one, um, Obnoxio the Clown. <laughs> Obnoxio the Clown versus the X-Men. Um, it intrigued me because it kind of, he kind of looks like a precursor to that guy, if y'all remember um, watching, I think it was on MTV back in the 90s, a guy called Yucko the Clown. He would go and do interviews with people and just make very crude, nasty, <laughs> nasty jokes. And he that's what this guy kind of reminded me of. Um, this is from April of 1983. And... I mean, it's it's starting to kind of get a little bit of bit of attention. Um, a nine point six, uh, a comic in a CGC nine point six grade, sold for thirty two dollars, and a CGC nine point two grade of this comic sold a couple months ago in July for sixty dollars. So, I mean, it's not in that great a shape. It's, 
I mean, it's not torn up or anything. So I don't think I have a 9.2 or a 9.6. I mean, I might. You never know. Um, but a uh, pretty interesting comic nonetheless. I'm going to enjoy reading this and uh, uh, putting this one away in the, in the old key collection. All right. So I thought that was pretty neat there. But yeah, Obnoxio the Clown going for 60 bucks in a, in a 9.2. I don't know why the 9.2 got a higher price than a 9.6, but um, that's that's how it worked out. All right, last one. Now you sealed up here. There it is. It's the top sealed. Cut it open. This is this is a big boy right here. I thought this was cool when I when I came across this one. Oh. Alright, so we've got X Force number twenty eight. There's a nice nice comic there. We've got uh, that cover over here, All Star Batman number one. Again, it it is a number one. I love my number ones, but it's just a little too modern. I don't know. I won't have a, any hard times or hard feelings parting ways with this one. This one is from uh, 20, 2016. So. Cool looking cover, though. I like it. If you're a Batman collector, this is a nice nice one to have. Let's see. Oh, let's see. Oh, it's still got the trading card in it. Wow. Cool. Um, X Factor number 34. And a lot of these X Fact or X Force number 34. We got pulled. A lot of these X Forces they came with um, Marvel, you know, Marvel trading cards on the inside of them. And this one still has trading cards in it. So, hmm, that's pretty cool. And it is cards of, if you can see it, Craven, Spider-Man, and that last one, Chameleon. The Chameleon. Very nice. Okay. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, Warlock and the Infinite Watch. Number three. Look pretty, pretty like, an, like a nice little comic there. I think this was 92, so a little, a little modern from what I'm used to collecting. Yeah, April of 92. I was kind of out of the graphic novel stuff by then. And this one, this was, and I saw this one, I was like, no way is this in. Um, five ninety nine Ollie's bag, but it, I I checked it, and I was like, "Yep, that's it." And I kept flipping on there, looking at Saga of the Swamp Thing number one from May of nineteen ninety two. Um, this is a key issue. It's the premiere issue of the second series of the Swamp Thing saga and it and it um retails the origin of the Swamp Thing. Fair market value for this book in uh, CGC 9.6, 9.2, 8.0 grade is somewhere around in the 80 to 70 dollar range. Fair market value. 80 to 70 dollar range if it grades out CGC 9.6, 9.2, 8.0. A CBCS grade of this comic in a 9.8 recently sold for 94 dollars. 
and a CBCS grade of 9.6 in the, of a ah, tripping over my words, a CBCS grade of 9.6. This comic, wait, this comic in a CBCS grade of 9.6. That's what I'm trying to say. Sold for $61 recently. So, very happy to have this thing right here. This is, this is stunning. It's just really nice shape. Um, don't know what it would grade out as, but looks complete. I'm going to enjoy reading this and bagging and boarding this bad boy. And, uh. Man, maybe maybe might consider grading that one day and see what happens. Well, that's it. My video is over 20 minutes long. Is try not to go over that time, but I just I get so excited talking about these things. So, um, tell me what y'all think. What y'all think about my comic book haul today? I thought it was pretty good. I'm on, I'm on uh, excuse me, hit Ollie's up again. Maybe in a couple weeks when I'm. Uh, in town up there at that Ollie's of the town that I went to today to have my wife's van serviced and uh, see what else I can find. But I'm going to tell you though, if you go to Ollie's and you want to look for their comics, I mean, I probably spent an hour to find just those three bags, just flipping through and like, no, no, Ooh, what's this? I'm like, oh, that's not that great. Uh, kind of trying to find you know, some of the some of the better ones that they had. They had a ton of them, so hopefully I can go back and look through some more and uh, get some more comics. As always, folks, oh, and leave a message in the comics. What do y'all, uh, comments, what do y'all think about me flipping through the little bag and kind of peering through and kind of sticking my finger in there and kind of wiggling them around a little bit? They say you might damage the comics doing that, but think about it. They've been thrown in a poly bag, been thrown in a case, transported on a semi-truck, probably bounced around in there and stuff, and then get thrown on the shelves at the store. So, I mean, you're not going to do too much more damage on them. And, you know, they, they're in pretty good shape already. So, I mean, I don't know. Tell me what you think about that. Am I cool for doing it? Not cool for doing it? Whatever. As always, folks, like, comment, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. Till next time, y'all take care now. Have a good one. Bye.